The windows are coming along really nice. I'm heading over here to do these last three on the bottom level and then I can work on the ones on the top level later. Hopefully I can get these done today. So then I'm noticing, hey, our pet snake is back again. What are you doing here? He's trying to get away. I want to grab him and move him somewhere else. You can see he just got a new skin and there's his old skin laying there. So let me just grab you by the head. <laughs> kind of scaring me. There we go. I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna put him over there in the woods. Okay, I gotta pick you up again. Now you're doing the striking position. I don't like that. There you go. Cruise off into there. Good job. Go eat some rodents and some bugs. If we keep seeing this snake, we're gonna have to give it a name. <laughs> So I was walking across the field this morning and saw this fairy ring. We know that fairies didn't create it because we don't allow fairies on our property, but <laughs> this uh, actually is a particular kind of mushroom that does this. We think that this is the one that I looked up and saw on Wikipedia. I can't pronounce it, but uh, they also call it the fairy Campignon. And it's just really neat to see it grow in a circle like that. Maybe we'll try to watch it over the next 24 hours and see if it finishes the circle. I've seen I've seen them at people's houses in their yards where the one day it was like this and then the next day it was more of the circle. Here's another one right beside it. We've got this uh, arch right here, and then we've got one mushroom over there. So it was kind of doing the whole circle. I see another batch of them down here, but I don't know if they've done a circle. They are doing kind of the curvature. Yeah, I'm seeing it over here and coming all the way around. I see one over there, so. That one's making the circle also. It's fun to see these phenomenon. Here's another batch of mushrooms, but I don't see a circle over here. I've probably only seen these mushroom circles about five or six times in my life. So it's kind of a, a fun treat to see it, especially on your own property. Here's another one that's not nearly as well formed. It seems like a couple of them are in areas where the chicken coop had been and the chickens had scratched up the ground. So that could be part of it. Started getting some heavy rain and lightning a minute ago. So since it's a Sunday, I'm gonna tinker around for a little while instead of being out there working hard. So one thing I've been wanting to make lately for the loft room is a game. I'm going to try to say it. <laughs> Shove hop -hinny. I think that's the way you say it. So I'm making a shove hop -hinny board. Since I don't have a British accent, I'm having a hard time saying it. But I'm going to use this veneer plywood. I'm going to try to use some of the dimensions that I've seen online and I'm going to uh, be fairly close, but I'm also going to just, I'm going to make it 
just for me to play it. I'm not going to try to be playing in official tournaments or anything. And we'll see how it goes. So if you wanted to look it up, it's S-H-O-V-E-H-A Penny, P-E-N-N-Y. So I grabbed this piece of plywood out of our pile of scraps. It's left over some, from some cabinets that were originally in the house. And I'm going to try to clean it up and make my board out of this. Okay, right now I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. The plywood's in kind of rough shape. I don't know if you can see it, but these are the high spots all showing up. So the veneer is all kind of bubbly on this side. This is the back side though. I measured up my lines and drew them on there with a pencil. I uh, also sanded my sides, rounded my front corners. On the wood burner, I've always used this tip right here. Kind of this chisel tip. And I'm gonna try this kind of pointed tip and see how that goes. Seems to be working well. It is uh, taking the old polyurethane and sort of lifting it up. So I'm going to need to sand that after it's done. But it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. so I need to sand them. of the table. One person takes a penny, 
sets it on the edge, and you can hit it with your thumb or with your palm. And you do five pennies. Besides two inches. I think I need to sharpen this edge a little bit. Because it is rounded and it makes it kind of hard to set it on there properly. So any pennies that end up in between the lines, and it can't be crossing a line at all. I saw where somebody made one with the groove just right. You could run a coin through it, and if it touches the coin, then you know that it's not perfect. So that one right there doesn't count. But these two right here would score a point. And if this is my side of the board, I haven't finished yet, but this is going to have a chalkboard finish on it. So I've ordered the paint. And so I would put one mark in this box and one mark in this box. And I saw where they're playing to the playing to three. So you would want three marks in each box to win. So there you go. That's how you play. Now you your turn. So I got two. I'm not playing the whole game. I don't want to play that. Very good at this game. Well, just to get one penny is good. Well, I wonder if that's all about. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. And of course, this is a little backboard to keep pennies from flying over and hitting your neighbors. I got one. <laughs>